This is the place to find yourself. Istanbul offers great universities and the lifestyle is really amazing here. So I live at the dorms at Maltepe University and I'm really happy with it. There's a cleaning service every few days and then there's the library nearby which is open 24-7. My first impression when I came was like, it's huge. You have everything in one uh, place. When you first come to multiple university, you don't know where what is and you're like, oh my God, I need help. Guess what? You're not alone. There is the international office people over there. They're like family. They're very helpful and they're always there for you. Istanbul is the perfect mixture between ancient and modern. Coming into this city helps me discover myself, learn about so many different cultures, learning about the world, which will help me in writing future books. At Maltepe University, we have a lot of research centers. Because of that, we have the ability to participate in a lot of international projects. Here at Maltepe University, the education consists of both practical and theoretical. We get the opportunity to practice everything we learn in class in real life. So after we graduate, we have a degree and we can work all over the world. People come to Istanbul all the time, but what they really miss when they visit are the antique shops, which contain a thousands of years of memories and also a thread of the modern future. I like to use every minute and just get out and hop on the ferry and just um, go from the Asian side to the European side and just enjoy the wonderful weather with the wonderful bus for us behind me and just enjoying the moment of Istanbul. Istanbul is a very beautiful, with great culture. This city is the symbol of diversity. Come and study at Maltepe University. Come here and feel like you're home. Welcome to the second session of the second day of Maltepe University International Student Congress 2022. My name is Yusuf Tolgenker. I am a research assistant at the Faculty of Fine Arts, Graphic Design Department. I will serve as the moderator of the Congress. Multiple University Student Congresses are organized by Multiple University annually. One of the four student congresses, Art Cons, is a student art congress prepared by the Faculty of Fine Arts and Conservatory of Music. This year, our Congress topic is Life with and Without Art. This year, we are fortunate to have two valuable keynote speakers for our Congress. The Chairman and Executive Member of the Board of Directors from Gamma Holding, Mr. Amar Tunchata, is going to address our audience. We are extremely honored to have him at our Congress. Hello, everyone. Let me uh, start by thanking Matabe University, Faculty of Fine Arts and Conservatory of Music for allowing me this time to give me this opportunity to address you. What an honor and what an amazing subject, life without or with art? Uh, it's an interesting question and uh, a, a wonderful question to discuss, especially if you are like me, an engineer. Um, of course, we can go into an academic conversation, but this is not my interest. My interest is to give you an opportunity, a glimpse into my world, uh, the layman's world, uh, the working world, and how art plays a role in this entire capacity. When I think about art, when I think about art, I think about creativity. And I think this is where everything starts. And when I think about creativity, the first name that comes to my mind is Sir Ken Robinson. Uh, he, was a, he was an amazing educator. Bless his heart, he passed away. And uh, he was an educator at the University of Warwick. Uh, he was uh, professor of art of educa uh, art education and I had an opportunity to listen to him speak one time and something he said left an impression with me and I'd like to share that with you uh, when he was uh, a young teacher when he first started his career uh, he taught all classes 
and um, his students were young. They were third graders, fourth graders, and uh, they, um, um, they had all different interests. But there was one student who had no interest in any subject, and this became his interest to try to understand how he was going to capture this particular student's imagination. Um, one day, when it was the art class, he realized that this student was very busy. They were drawing with tremendous passion. So he went up to them, to the student, he went up to the student and said, what are you doing? And the student said, I am drawing a picture of God. He said, wait a minute, nobody knows what God looks like. And without any hesitation, the student answered, they will in a minute. This is the spirit. This is the spirit where creativity starts. And this is where, what we need to give attention to. Because this actually, this small example carries us throughout life. And I am a good example of this because I applied this type of thinking in my factories. At one point in life, I was a manufacturer of building materials and I had factories around the world. And one of my factories, the specific one in Mexico, uh, was an amazing operation. Uh, there were uh, five shifts of workers coming through. Uh, it was a very busy operation. And my whole thought was, how can I make this environment the best environment to work in and the most productive environment? So um, I thought about, how about a human touch? We start with labor. Uh, machines, okay, we can adjust machines. But how about people? So I thought, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I wake up in a different mood. I wake up happy, but uh, some days I'm less happy. Some days, some days I'm more happy. So I thought some days I don't want to go to work. Some days I want to go to work. Um, but this affected my day, how my mood started in the morning. And I had an opportunity to test, if I had an opportunity to test the uh, mood of people when they showed up to work, this would really help me in organizing the most productive environment. This was my thought. Well, in the factory, when you come in, there's a board and you have a card and you pick up your card and you go to a punch clock and you punch the clock and then you put the board, uh, the, your card into another board. And then at night when you're leaving, you do the same thing in reverse. Well, I thought this is a great opportunity. When they come in, they can tell me how they feel. So I wanted to give them an opportunity. How did I do this? I had one board where all the cards were hanging and then there was the punch clock and then there was another board. Well, I changed that board. I made three boards. One of them I painted red the other one yellow and the other one green. Red meant, I don't want to be here today. I just don't want to work today. Yellow meant, mm, maybe. And uh, green meant, I am ready to go. Uh, so when I did this, uh, human resources told me, uh, you're an idiot. Nobody is gonna ever put a card in red. Everybody is going to put it in green. Who wants to take a chance to be fired? I said, you're right, you're right. But one person, one person will do it. One day they will do it. And that's the day I'm looking forward to. And it happened. One day, everybody was excited. They came to me and they said, we have a card in red. I said, great. So I walked up there, I picked up the card. And when I picked up the card, I saw the worker walking towards me, a lady. And without even saying a word, she said, why don't you go ahead and fire me? I know you're going to fire me. And I said, no, that's not the intention. The intention is I want to find out why you don't want to work today. And she said, look, I am 20 years old. I have three kids, no husbands around, and my mother takes care of the kids while I'm at work. And all my kids, including my mother, they're all sick. And I'm not feeling well myself. And here I'm at work because I have to come to work. So this is why I want to let you know that I don't want to be here today. I said, wonderful, so come with me now. And we went to her home 
we found, uh, we, we called the doctor, we got the medicine and the help they need. And um, I told her, I said, today you're going to get paid full day's work as if you were at work. And you can do whatever you want. You can stay with your kids, you can stay with your mother, or you can come back to work, but I really don't want you to, to be on the floor. You can do something else. She said, okay, I want to come back to work. I said, what would you like to do? And she said, why don't you give me a, a pencil and some paper and leave me alone? I said, okay, it's perfectly fine, understandable. So she went uh, to the cafeteria. She sat at one of the tables and she started drawing something. And she drew this amazing, amazing uh, illustration. That was her work that day. And at the end of that illustration, I asked her, I said, what were you trying to do? She said, I drew a picture of my mood today. As a reminder to myself, as a reminder of this day where you paid attention to me, and as a reminder to everybody that if they ever felt that way, they could learn from me. So she wanted to communicate through art. And that was my happiest day in the factory. Because through that experience, I was able to expand that factory into a lifestyle. We had an art gallery in that factory. We had a nursery. We had a laundry room. We had a music room. We had a library. All of these things came through this process. But the key factor here was her method of communication. And it was art. It was through art. That's where she wanted to speak herself. And those words, meant a lot to me, meant a lot to the workers, and it was a very soft way to touch people and to explain ideas. So when I think about this topic, life with or without art, uh, look at this experience. How could you possibly imagine life without art? And what happened at the end of this process is also very important because throughout this process, I realized Creativity in the workplace, the thoughts, the systems, and the way that people communicated, um, it renewed motivation. Everybody was more motivated. And it became, the, it promoted clarity. People understood what they could, what they couldn't do. Before this process, they had no voice. With this process, they had a big voice. And um, they started thinking critically, critical thinking. This was, this was major uh, in, a, in a factory setting. They started seeing the big picture because they understood everybody's feelings and thoughts and ideas and how it, it interacted with each other. And um, our productivity went sky high. People couldn't believe it. Other companies wanted to come and see what we were doing uh, and uh, how we were doing it. We had 40 people waiting outside for somebody uh, to be fired so that they could come in and start working. It was amazing. Um, and it also promoted a, an amazing environment of positivity. And this is what you need when you're in a working environment. You have to think positively. And um, also it created a tremendous environment for logical reasoning. Because when in, the, in the creative process, all of these things come about and through art, you share this value. Uh, and so this is uh, my experience of how art plays a tremendous role in our lives and how it has to be integrated and how we cannot think of our lives without art. So in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with some um, suggestions that I've made to others. You have to have art in your life. You have to think through art. You have to think of art as if you're brushing your teeth. You wake up in the morning, you brush your teeth, but you look at an object, you look at anything, you see, you hear a voice, you have to understand its philosophy. And only you can do that through art and through your creative process. So go, some of my suggestions, 
time to time go outdoors, walk around, see what is outside. See and understand that you are a part of something much bigger than yourself. This is important. Um, daydream. You have to daydream. Just like that student who wanted to show us what God looked like. You have to daydream. That, that's where it starts. Um, sometimes keep a journal. Some people keep a journal in figures. Some people keep, keep a journal in words. Some people keep a journal in poetry. Keep a journal because it's a reference point. You go back to it, you read, you see, you see progress in your life. And um, make sure, make sure you start thinking bigger through artistic activities. Um, a personal example, I am now 64 years old and last year I started playing the trumpet and I love it. And I suggest you the same. Uh, once in a while, another suggestion is once in a while, take a nap out of a blue. Clear your mind so that you can start thinking more clearly and bigger and more creatively. Um, always take a step in the positive direction. This is very important. And when you do it all, the most important of all, take time to meditate. Because through that, your creativity will turn into a product. And that product will turn into your lifestyle. And that lifestyle will be a happy lifestyle. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I thought this was worth sharing. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amartun Chata, for this meaningful speech. The final session of our Congress begins with a musical performance. We will listen to Allegro non troppo from Sonata for Cello and Piano in D minor by Dmitry Shostakovich. Performers are Denis Benzetsal on Cello and Cem Babajan on Piano. Denis Benzessel is a cello student at Multiple University Conservatory of Music. Dr. Jem Babajan is a lecturer at the same school.
We would like to thank Deniz Benzetsel and Cem Babacan. We are grateful to have them in our Congress. Our next performance, we will listen to Raperin Yilmaz on flute and Deniz Bıçak Kula on piano. They will perform Adagio Ma Non Tanto from Flute Sonata in E minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. Many thanks to Raperin Yilmaz and Deniz Bıçak Kula. We love to have them with us at our Congress. Our final musical performance of the Congress is a composition by Emre Özman. Mr. Özman, 
is a student at composition department at Maltepe University Conservatory of Music. His composition is titled Music for Flute and Piano. We will listen to Aysu Zehra Shanver on flute and Cem Babacan on piano. Both valuable performances are faculty members at Maltepe University Conservatory of Music. Many thanks to this submission by Mr. Emre Özman and performers Dr. Aysu Zehra Şanver and Dr. Cem Babacan. Now, I invite Mr. Ali Asrın Toktaş from Maltepe University, Faculty of Fine Arts, Department of Cartoon and Animation, to give a presentation titled Review of Tex Avery's Blitz Wolf cartoon produced during World War II on the concept of propaganda. Hello everyone. I will talk about my article. My article title is Review All Text Overies, Liz Wolf, cartoon produced during World War II on the concept of propaganda. The purpose of article, it is to show the use of manipulation through cartoons at the beginning of the message container in cartoons through propaganda in the history of cinema. 
together with its development on the cinema industry. This is movie poster from Soviet Russia. One of the states that use propaganda in many ways is the Soviet Union. Propaganda has created a cycle within the cinema education relationship. The movie Battleship Potemkin became a source of inspiration for following years. These cartoons made by Disney. Nazi Germany was humorously criticized through propaganda in Disney's 1943 cartoon The Fair Face. Leni Riefenstahl was a director. During the Nazi Germany period, she directed the movie Triumph of the Will at the request of Adolf Hitler. She shot the movie Olympia as a documentary of the Olympia competition. This photo from Trump of the Field, 1935. Uh, this photo from Olympia, two black runners against the strangers of the white race. Line drawings were made in its two blocks, the Elliott State and the Access State, technical mentors Disney Studio. This photo from Soviet Russia, fascist barbarians, in this man, the stink man from Adolf Hitler, the, the first dog, Benito Mussolini, the second dog is General from Hungary, the third dog is Japan General. In this photo, these are dogs, are soldiers, not Germany, that's Sturm Field. This carton is from Japan, Mamata no Umiwashi, this carton made the USA, the education for that, the making of a Nazi. Texavari was an animator. Texavari is known for his unique humor and narration. It has produced content for adults. His handling and adaptation of humor inspired these years after him. Bliss Wolf. It is a cartoon adapted for propaganda purposes with humor of Texavari's Three Little Pigs tale. Thanks for listening. Many thanks to Mr. Ali Astrun Toktar. We are so happy to host wonderful presentations at our Congress. The last presentation of the Congress is by Ms. Selin Erdogan from Ankara Music and Fine Arts University, Institute of Music and Fine Arts, Department of Musicology, Music Sciences Doctorate Program, Turkey. I invite Ms. Selin Erdogan to give her presentation titled the appearance of mysticism in European and American minimalist music. Hello to all participants and to everyone watching this Congress. Uh, my subject is the appearance of mysticism in European and American minimalist music. It is known that the need of to make sense of life, that and the afterlife has existed throughout history. Within the scope of this need, the meaning of life and the functioning of the universe have been tried to be explained both philosophically and scientifically by, by various thinkers from ancient times to the present. In this context, religions are particularly important. Religions are often institutionalized belief systems that include uh, specific teachings, rituals, and practices of worship. It is possible to say that religious rituals and worship have sacred meanings for their believers. Teachings such as Sufism and Kabbalah, which are the mystical interpretations of Abrahamic religions, contain esoteric meanings and explicate the Creator, who is a transcendent being, and the philosophy of the universe, with mystical and symbolic qualities. In this context, mysticism is a current of thought that is seen in almost all monotheistic and polytheistic religions, which includes philosophical, esoteric, spiritual, internal interpretations and experiences of belief systems. This current of thought has also found a place in the interpretation and meaning of the concept of music. It is possible to encounter traces of ancient Greek philosophy, Sufism and Asian religions such as Buddhism, Hinduism and Taoism in the reflections of mysticism in music. It can be stated that the most important sources shaping European and American minimalist music are these religious and mystical teachings. 
However, these two different approaches of minimalist music are not exactly the same, especially because of their historical backgrounds. In this study, the concepts of mysticism and neo-mysticism are defined. Later, definitions of music in the perspective of mysticism are, are included. American and European minimalist composers are included and their differences in their composing processes and interpretation of minimalist music are examined. In this context, the movement of spiritual minimalism is also mentioned. I will continue my presentation in Turkish. İnsanoğlunun yaşadığı dünyayı, evreni, ölümü, ölümden sonrasını e, kavrama ve anlamlandırma isteği onu büyük sorgulamalar yapmaya yöneltmiştir. Yüzyıllardır süre gelen bu süreçte felsefi, dini ve bilimsel olarak çeşitli yorumlamalar yapılmıştır. Mistisizm, çoğunlukla felsefi, dini temellere ve deneyimlere dayanan bir anlamlandırma sistemidir. İbrahimi dinler perspektifinden bakıldığında mistisizm tek ve yüce varlık olan yaradana ulaşma ve onunla bir ar olma arzusunu içerir. Fakat her türlü spiritüel deneyim mistisizm kapsamında ele alınabilir. Spiritüellik kavramı bireyin içsel yaşamı, öznel dini deneyimleri ve Tanrı ile arasındaki aracısız ilişkisiyle bağdaştırılmıştır. E, romantizm yükse romantizmin yükselişi ve e, psikolojinin gelişmesiyle e, maneviyat daha içselleştirilmiştir ve bireyselleştirilmiştir. Asya mistisizmi olarak tanımlanabilecek olan Budizm, Hinduizm ve Taoizm gibi dinlerin günümüzde daha seküler bir boyut kazanması neo mistisizm bağlamında değerlendirilebilecek olan New Age e, inanışların temelini oluşturmaktadır denebilir. Ayrıca neo paganizm, neo şamanizm gibi inanışlar günümüzde de görülebilir. Dolayısıyla günümüz mistisizm anlayışı eski inanışların yeniden yorumlanması olarak açıklanabilir. Bu bağlamda neomistisizm, mistisizmle ilişkili öğelerin günümüzdeki yansımaları olarak açıklanabilir. Neomistisizm sadece dini algıları içermemektedir, her türlü çeşitli e, deneyim biçimlerini içerebilir. Müzik ve mistisizm arasındaki ilişki ise tarih boyunca pek çok kez incelenmiştir. Bu çalışmada oldukça geniş kapsamlı olan bu konuya kısaca değinilmiştir. Müziğin kaynağına ve anlamına yönelik e, sorular Antik Yunan, Müslüman, Yahudi ve Hristiyan medeniyetlerinde filozoflar ve teologlar tarafından cevaplandırılmaya çalışılmıştır. Günümüzde özellikle 20. yüzyıldan itibaren psikoloji bilimi bu konuyla ilgilenmektedir. Evrenin işleyişi ve müziğin öğeleri arasında doğrudan ilişki kuran çeşitli düşünürler bulunmaktadır. Bu çalışmada İnayat Han ve George Gürciyev'in görüşlerinden kısaca bahsedilmiştir. Sufi müzisyen ve mistik inayat han, armoni, form, titreşim, ses, sessizlik gibi müziğe dair öğelerin mistik anlamlar taşıdığını öne sürmektedir. Ve bu düşüncelerini büyük ölçüde İslami referanslar ve tasavvufi pratikler üzerinden örneklendirmektedir. Evrene, yıldızların ve gezegenlerin hareketlerine, hepsi mükemmel ve değişmez olan titreşim ve ritim kanunlarına bakıldığında kozmik sistemin müziğin kanunu, ahenk kanunu ile çalıştığı görülür. Eğer kozmik sistem herhangi bir şekilde eksik olursa o zaman dünyada orantılı olarak birçok yıkıcı güçle felaketler meydana gelir ve etkisi dünyada tezahür eder. Tüm astrolojik yasanın dayandığı herhangi bir ilke varsa ve bunun arkasında büyü ve mistisizm bilimi varsa o da müziktir demiştir e, İnayat Han. Müzikle ilgili e, en açık şekilde ilişkili olan e, gizli ve ezoterik sistem ise e, George Gürciyev tarafından keşfedilmiştir. Gürcüye bu köklerin aslında e, Sanskrit, Hinduizm'de e, veya daha eski Çin dini sistemlerinde yatıyor olabileceğini öne sürmüştür. E, Gürcüye'nin ezoterik sistemine göre e, yedi notanın her birini e, simgelediği anlamlar vardır ve bir merdiven gibi yaratıcıya doğru ulaşmaktadır. E, bu Gürcüye'nin sistem, e, ezoterik sisteminin bir kısmını e, ben bu çalışmada bahsedeceğim. Ee, örneğin gamın ilk do notası hiçliği simgelerken bir okta üstündeki do notası her şeyin sahibini simgeleyebilmektedir. Mistisizm Amerikan minimalist müziğini oldukça etkilemiştir. Ee, Amerikan minimalizmin oluşumun ve e, oluşum ve gelişim, gelişim sürecinde e, Avrupa serializminin kuralcılığına karşı bir tepki görülebilir. E, bir diğer neden olarak da İkinci Dünya Savaşı'nın yıpratıcı etkilerinden uzaklaşmak ve Farklı coğrafyaların, farklı coğrafyaların müziklerini tanıma isteği de düşünülebilir. 
Akımın önde gelen bestecileri Lamont Young, Steve Reich, Terry Riley ve Philip Glass olmuştur. Bu dört besteci 60'lı yıllarda kendilerine özgü müzikal dillerini oluşturmuşlardır. Amerikan minimalizminin dinsel olanı denemesi Glass, Young, Riley gibi bestecilerin yüzünü Afrika müziklerine ve Hint, Tibet gibi müzikal bağlantıları olan Doğu coğrafyalarına çevirmesiyle gerçekleştirmiştir. Örneğin Philip Glass, Hindistan'ı ziyaret etmiştir ve Aknaten adlı operasında Akatça, İbranice ve Antik Mısır dillerini kullanmıştır. Satyagraha adlı operasında ise Mahatma Gandhi'nin felsefesine etkilenmiştir ve Sanskritçe dilini de kullanmıştır. Lamont Young, Hindistanlı müzisyen Pandit Pran Nath ile tanışmış ve Hint müziğinin makamsal ve ritmik yapısına oldukça yoğun ilgi göstermiştir. Steve Reich, Afrika ve Yahudi müziklerine ilgi duymuştur. Drumming adlı eserinde Afrika ritimlerinin etkisi net bir şekilde görülebilmektedir. Besteci Tehillim adlı eserinde Yahudi ilahilerini ve vurmalı çalgıları bir arada kullanmıştır. Bütün bu gelişmelerin tümü incelendiğinde Asya mistisizminin Amerika minimalizmi, Amerikan minimalizmini büyük ölçüde etkilemiş olduğu ifade edilebilir. Avrupa minimalizmini Amerikan minimalizminden ayıran en temel özelliğin ise Afrika ve Asya gelenekleriyle ilgisi olmaması olarak tanımlayabiliriz. Avrupa minimalizminin kollarından birisi olan kutsal minimalizmin kutsal minimalizmde minimal kompozisyon uygulamaları dinsel konuları ele almada kullanılmıştır. Kutsal minimalizmin önemli temsilcileri Avro Pert, Christo Penderecki, John Tavener, Henry Goretzky, Gia Gancheli, Sofia Gubaydulina, Alfred Schnittke, Alan Hovhannes gibi çoğunlukla Doğu Avrupa kökenli besteciler olmuştur. Bu bestecilerin kutsal minimalizme yönelmeleri, Sovyetler Birliği'nin dağılması ile birlikte baskı altına alınmış olan kültürel kimlikler ve dinsel ritüeller ile tekrar bağ kurmak istemeleri ile ilişkilendirilebilir. Kutsal minimalizmde farklı ve yeni te- teknikler kullanılmamış, öze dönülmüştür. En çok yararlanılan kaynaklar kilise melodileri ve dini anlatılar e, gibi geçmişe dayalı e, kültür öğeleri olmuştur. Örneğin John Tavener'ın The Whale adlı eserinde Hazreti Yunus'un öyküsüne yer verilmektedir. Avro Pert'in eserlerinde ise Hristiyanlığa dair öğelere sıkça rastlanmaktadır. Sonuç olarak Avrupa ve Amerikan minimalist müziklerinin oluşum ve gelişim süreçlerinde siyasal ve tarihsel gelişmelerin etkileri oldukça büyüktür. Amerikan e, pardon, e, Avrupa serializmine e, tepki olarak doğmuş olan Amerikan e, minimalist bestecilerinin serializmin müzikal kura, kuralcılığından ve İkinci Dünya Savaşı'nın bıraktığı olumsuz etkilerden uzaklaşarak Doğu coğrafyalarına ilgi gösterdiği görülmektedir. Kutsal minimalizm bestecilerinin ise Sovyetler Birliği'nin yıkılmasının ardından dini ve geleneksel öğelerle yeniden bağ kurma eğiliminde oldukları görülmektedir. Bu çalışma süresince yararlandığım kaynaklar kaynakça da görülmektedir. İlginiz için teşekkür ederim. Thank you for your attention. We would like to thank Selin Doğan for her presentation. Finally, we would like to express our gratitude to all participants of our Congress. Traditionally, Art Cons offers participants various Congress awards for presentations, performances, and exhibitions. Our Assessment Committee of Fine Arts and Conservatory of Music will decide the winners of these awards and announce at a later date. We congratulate them and we would like to express that for us all performances and presentations already has placed the highest awards in our hearts by being a part of our Congress. In the final section is a side event in this Congress, Multiple University Faculty of Fine Arts, Gastronomy and Culinary Arts Department offers a video titles, Geographical Indications, Life with and Without Art. We want to thank the creators of this project, Perihan Sena Aydınel, Ibrahim Daşdoyen, Cem Erdoğan, Doğa Eroğlu, Yağmur Etyemez, 
Aybüke Özmen, Alper Varsak ve Kadir Yavuz.
We would like to thank Gastronomy and Culinary Arts Department for this project. We have a closing speech by Vice President of ArtCons Student Board, Ms. Golshit Hoda. Let's hear what she wants to share with you. Dear viewers and participants of our Congress, as the Vice President of Student Board, I would like to express that we are so happy to have your participation at our Congress. And we sincerely thank for your participation and your contribution in International Student Congress at Maltepe University. The title of the Congress made us discuss and share our thoughts on place of arts in our lives. We are so thrilled to get to know you through the Congress and we are delighted that we had the chance to share our viewpoints about life with or without art. To me, art is the only actual international language of the planet Earth. Wherever I'd be, I wouldn't feel like I'm a stranger in the circle of art. That way the world is my homeland. As a music student at Maltepe University, I feel grateful that our university provided us the opportunity to gather around a friendly atmosphere. Our university is placed in a green campus with a beautiful blue sky in this summer. I feel lucky that in order to learn to drop of the ocean of the art, we come to Maltepe University amongst the pine trees. To us, your participation meant a lot more than a heartwarming matter you assist us to open a door to a better future we hope to host you in our beautiful campus at various other academic events but hopefully in person in the nearest future thank you multiple university international student congress art cons published a booklet of all events after Congress is completed. This booklet will also be published online. We would like to thank you for being with us throughout the Congress. We hope to have you visit our campus and attend our future academic events, not only online, but also in person. This is the place to find yourself. Istanbul offers great universities and the lifestyle is really amazing here. So I live at the dorms at Maltepe University and I'm really happy with it. There's a cleaning service every few days and then there's the library nearby which is open 24-7. My first impression when I came was like, it's huge. You have everything in one uh, place. 
When you first come to multiple university, you don't know where what is and you're like, oh my God, I need help. Guess what? You're not alone. There is the international office people over there. They're like family. They're very helpful and they're always there for you. Istanbul is the perfect mixture between ancient and modern. Coming into this city helps me discover myself, learn about so many different cultures, learning about the world, which will help me in writing future books. At Maltepe University, we have a lot of research centers. Because of that, we have the ability to participate in a lot of international projects. Here at Maltepe University, the education consists of both practical and theoretical. We get the opportunity to practice everything we learn in class in real life. So after we graduate, we have a degree and we can work all over the world. People come to Istanbul all the time. But what they really miss when they visit are the antique shops, which contain thousands of years of memories and also a thread of the modern future. I like to use every minute and just get out and hop on the ferry and just um, go from the Asian side to the European side and just enjoy the wonderful weather with the wonderful Bosphorus behind me and just enjoying the moment of Istanbul. Istanbul is a very beautiful, with great culture. This city is the symbol of diversity. Come and study at Maltepe University. Come here and feel like you're home.